Welcome back, everybody. My name is James, and you are watching Red Nut Fly Fishing. This will be part one of a series of fly tying videos where I tie my most commonly used Australian lake and river flies. This series comes at request from one of my subscribers who just wanted some clarity on what flies to use, where to use them, and what materials to tie them out of. So big shout out to Alan. Thank you for requesting these videos and thank you for your feedback. Stick around to the end and I'll show you where I buy my fly tying materials. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get cracking. <laughs> That's a big fish. First up in this series, we have a rust brown pheasant tail nymph tied on a jig hook. This would have to be one of my most used flies on any Victorian or New South Wales stream. Tying it on a jig hook like this means I very rarely get snagged up. The hook in the vise is a size 14 barbless jig hook and our bead is a 2.4 millimeter silver bead. Copper and gold are also very effective. The thread I'm using is a Semperfly classic wax thread in 8 in brown and we start as always with a thread base along our hook shank, stopping the thread where a barb would be on a standard hook. We then snip away our excess as always and now it is time to tie in some pheasant tail. I like the rust brown pheasant tail. I think it represents our nymphs in an, uh, our Victorian waters a lot better than most pheasant tail colors, but natural works just fine. Selecting three to four fibers, we're gonna tie those in to our hook shank. First, we're gonna measure the length of the fibers by holding them against the hook shank and making them just about the same length as the shank, not the whole hook. You'll wanna tie them in on top of the hook shank with two loose wraps and then adjust the length of the tail accordingly. Once you're happy, snug down that thread. And next we're gonna put a thread wrap underneath the tail just to get it to stand up nicely. This will not only make the fly look better, but it'll stop those tail fibers from wrapping up around the actual point of the hook. Once you're happy there, just throw in one more thread wrap. And the next thing we're gonna do is add our wire rib. The reason I don't put many thread wraps at the back here is because I'm trying to keep the taper of the fly at the tail really thin. The wire we're gonna add is some um, ultra wire in small medium in gold. Tie in about a two inch piece of gold wire to the rear of the hook. Then with some securing wraps, wrap up towards the back of the bead, snugging that down nice and tight and keeping your gold wire on the side of the hook. Keeping your wire on the side of the hook like this helps with the shape of the fly. The goal here is to get a really nice tapered body. Once you're happy, snip off that excess pheasant tail. The next step is to add some pheasant tail fibers. I like to use about six to eight fibers for this. Tying them in by their tips and messing it up a couple of times before I get it right. But I tie them in by the tips and wrap down towards the rear of the hook, keeping the fibers on top of the hook. Tying them in on top of the hook puts them in a good position to wrap them forward. Once I'm happy with how they're tied in and making sure I'm far enough back on that tail and over that wire, I then bring my thread forward and I build up a slight taper in the body towards the head. This means that by the time you wrap your pheasant tail fibers forward, you'll have a nice tapered body, thin at the tail, fat up near the bead. From here, our next step is to wrap these pheasant tail fibers forward up to the back of the bead. The best way to do this is to twist them up and wrap them forward, making sure they stay twisted. This will make them easier to wrap forward and easier to tie off at the end and also give it a nice furry looking body. Tie those fibers off just behind the bead and snip away the excess. Now it is time to wrap our gold wire forward. We wrap this in the opposite direction to the pheasant tail. This is called a counter wrap. The reason we counter wrap is because it secures the pheasant tail down to the hook shank. Also protects the pheasant tail from sharp teeth. I like to use a small medium wire for that reason. Small medium wire ensures that the fish isn't going to destroy your fly. Once that 
wire is secure behind the bead head, helicopter the excess free. And that is the body of the fly done. The next thing we have to do is add a wing case and some legs. To do this, we add some more pheasant tail fibers. When you add in the fibers, make sure that the tips are sticking out past the bead. These will be the legs and we'll fold them back later on. Test and adjust the position of these until you get it right. Usually around the six to eight millimeter mark does the job. And this is something you'll get used to the more you tie. Secure those pheasant tail fibers in nice and tight, wrapping back about three to four millimeters from the bead. Once you are happy with that, it's time to fold the legs back. With your thumb, push the legs back, folding them over and trying to get three to four legs on each side of your fly. This can be a bit of a tricky move, but take your time. Bit by bit, little by little, you'll get it right. And of course, the more you practice, the better you are going to get at fly tying. Now that I'm happy with where I've got those legs sitting, I'm going to get my thumb and forefinger of my other hand and pinch the tips of those legs. Once they're pinched in place, throw in some thread wraps behind the bead to secure them down in place. The next step is to create the wing case. To do this, pull your pheasant tail fibers forward and with some securing wraps, tie them down behind the bead head. Once that's secured, snip away the excess pheasant tail. I apologize for my thumb being in the way for this step, but I'm sure you get it. I like to throw in a couple more wraps for good measure. Now it's time to bring in your whip finisher and give it a three to four turn whip finish. If you don't have a whip finisher, then half hitches here will work just fine. Snug that down nice and tight and snip away the excess thread. That's almost it, we're nearly there. What I like to do now is add some UV resin on a pin to the wing case. This will secure your thread in place and add durability to the fly. I also like the way that it looks on the wing case. I think it gives the fly a little bit more contrast and makes it stand out a bit more. If you don't have UV resin, you could skip this step uh, or alternatively you can use like a clear nail varnish which works quite well and makes that thread nice and secure well that's it guys that is a rust brown pheasant tail jig nymph i tie this fly in size 12 14 and 16. adjust the size depending on the water you're fishing feel free to experiment with bead sizes and bead colors I tie this with beads ranging from 2.4 millimeters up to 4 millimeters. This means that I'm covered in all types of water, whether I'm fishing the Goulburn, the Tumut, or small streams like the Rubicon or the Stevensons, for example. Well, that is it from me, guys. I appreciate you watching this video and I hope you got something out of it. Please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, all those good things. And happy fishing. I'll see you on the next video. As per the start of the video guys, here's my suppliers and their websites. I've found all these suppliers to be very professional and reliable. <laughs> That's a big fish. <laughs>